Eseltine's professional career includes service in the Royal Air Force Police as well as in the British Transport Police as a trained police detective. But from uh, an uh, ufological viewpoint, uh, we must say that he was uh, the founder and the editor of ufomonthly.com uh, and also later the co editor of UFO Data magazine. But presently, uh, we must say that uh, uh, he is uh, uh, the founder and uh, the editor of the excellent uh, uh, online magazine, UFO True magazine, very well known, uh, not only in the United Kingdom. Um, for his activity, he has received the Exopolitics Great Britain Award in uh, 2012. Besides, he represented the United Kingdom in several UFO conferences and symposia all over the world, including the San Marino Symposium. And uh, therefore, his uh, contribution will be very precious. Hello, San Marino, this virtual conference in these very strange times. My name is Gary Zeltine, and I'm the founder and editor of UFO Truth magazine. My background uh, to talk about UFOs is based on a childhood sighting when I was 16 and then having followed the subject privately for many years in 2002 whilst I was still a serving police officer I launched an unofficial national database called Proofos, Police Reporting UFO Sightings. Prior to that I'd spent six years in the Royal Air Force between 1983 and 1989 uh, serving uh, at two nuclear bases protecting nuclear weapons. Uh, I went on to have an almost 24 year career in the police um, and for the last 19 years I was an advanced interviewer of suspects and witnesses and a detective constable uh, which is basically uh, a rank that meant that you were at the sharp end, murder man, slaughter red, that was kind of where I like to do. I like to be at the sharp end doing interviews with people uh, and interacting with people. By 2013, I decided that I wanted to become a full-time ufologist. Now, obviously, there aren't that many in the world, and uh, the circumstances dictated that uh, my new wife uh, had a very good job as a nurse, and uh, it meant that for the first time I wasn't just a breadwinner. And so we took the decision to uh, to try to set up the magazine and see if it worked. So I approached a lot of top researchers who I'd met along the way over the many years of doing lectures, and uh, many agreed to either contribute on a regular basis or an occasional basis. So that's my background. Now, the we find ourselves in a very strange situation, and I don't think I've ever done it in quite this way, a virtual lecture for want of a better phrase and so my lecture is called uh, ufology in lockdown and uh, that's probably no surprise uh, we talk about ufology and we think that the world has come to kind of a, a big standstill because of this national uh, this international world pandemic and let's talk about that uh, I don't think it has and I think there is still a lot of valuable ongoing research and, and things are changing, I think, actually quite quickly. I mean, as I look at the subject now, I could not help to think that when Ronald Reagan spoke at the UN and said, you know, I wonder how our, all our differences would be put aside if we were facing a common threat. Well, for the first time in my life, and I suspect anyone's uh, living uh, now, um, and certainly the biggest health crisis uh, since the 1918 flu pandemic, the Spanish flu, we find ourselves where we are just reduced to the human race. And I never thought I would see that in my lifetime. But effectively, that's what's happened. And it causes me to have draw the parallels to the Reagan speech, because effectively, for the first time, we've seen the human race come together as one, the human race, not nationalities, but the human race against a common, common enemy, which in this case is this uh, coronavirus. 
but it's, in essence it's a similar parallel and I wonder uh, what would happen uh, if we were to go to a full disclosure world which is what most re researchers kind of yearn for and have done for many decades but it, it is coming and I wanted to kind of explore that and, and point out some of the research that says to me we are actually moving a lot closer to disclosure with a big D and I think the first thing that uh, I want to think about is something that effectually has changed the landscape and yet it's only very recently in fact the 16th of December uh, 2017 is when Leslie Keane uh, published her article in the New York Times which really brought to world attention for the first time the uh, the Tic Tac incident, the 2004 Tic Tac incident involving the USS Nimitz and the various people involved uh, and of course it released a black and white uh, video that at that time was unauthenticated uh, showing this strange uh, tic tac like object that was uh, clearly moving in ways very bizarre to, to aviation pilots of the time and, and so when we look at that there was I think the first real um, piece of the jigsaw to fall into place to create uh, the pathway to uh, a disclosure with a big D um, the ramifications were so important because it, it announced that the Pentagon, uh, Luis Elizondo, who ran the former Pentagon secret program, uh, 